Oh, I thought I would always write. I didn't have really a notion of publishing or didn't seem anything, you know, probably likely to me that I would publish. And then it began to seem more possible as I sort of um, read more and sort of began to realize that I was, I thought I was writing as well as, as some of the people I was reading, um, as many of the people that I was reading. You know, I'd won a high school national scholastic sh short story prize, and it was, I'd always written, even as a little kid. Um, and, you know, as I say, I wrote a, a novel as a, in my early 20s. But I think, you know, at a certain point I became, I began to think differently about structuring a novel, about, you know, the need to, um, to sort of make some accommodation to the reader in a way I don't think I was willing to do when I was younger. To sort of say, yes, there will be a reader, or a, a reader is someone different from me and needs in some way to be approached as someone different from me. Uh, you know, I always am working in what I think is a different way, with a different structure, with a different kind of approach to the characters, or in a whole, and it, it always seems to me as though the novel um, sort of sets its own terms and makes its own rules, and those are ones that I'm learning how to do as I go along. I mean, I've, I have felt that way about each thing that I wrote, that it was very different from the last in, that, in what it asked of me and, and in my own sense of uh, coming to it without knowing anything. When I launch myself into what I think might be the first sentence, it just feels very frightening and very... Um, new and, you know, very much as though I'm not sure what I'm doing at all. Um, and as though I'm not sure, you know, what the tone is going to be and, you know, just what the right words are with which to start, essentially. If I'm s frightened of it in some way, then I just sit down and say, okay, what's frightening me here? What, why can't I get through this? I mean, what, what do I need to think about? I mean, I write those words down. and. Um, and then I try to answer them, and I just keep making notes. And sometimes I'll give myself an assignment, you know, you know, say, write down 20 things that this woman believes in. I mean, if I sort of don't have a sense that I understand the character, or you know, uh, write down, you know, three things that happened to her that are very unimportant that that she sort of thinks about. Some sort of small assignment like that, which often just sort of takes me over the hump in some way or another. I had a character in one book who was a murderer, actually, and I felt I wanted to have him at a certain point kind of explain himself to someone else, essentially justify himself to someone else. And I gave it my very best shot. I really tried to imagine what he felt like as a young man doing that, the kind of rage and woundedness he felt, and the sense he had of conducting himself in life afterwards in a way that atoned for that, that he, that he judged himself to have atoned for that. I wrote that book during a time when um, uh, the O.J. Simpson trial was going on, and there was also a murder in Massachusetts, where I'm from, uh, where a young boy had killed the mother of some, his friends, a 15-year-old boy. And in both cases, they, of course, said they didn't do it. In both cases, I believed they did do it. But I also believed that both of them felt they were fundamentally good people and even if they did it, it didn't matter because they weren't really the kind of person who would do it. And that was seemed to me what both of them were saying when they offered this justification for themselves. And, and I could understand that. I mean, I could understand forgiving yourself for this one lapse because basically you were good. You were a good person. My first editor was a guy named Ted Solitaroff, who was a sort of an old, an eminence in the publishing world and wrote a lot of essays. And he wrote a wonderful essay called Writing in the Cold, the First Ten Years, in which he sort of talked about the fact that he, he thought um, that people needed to be able to sustain themselves without much support for their writing for about ten years, he thought was the average when they didn't get much of anything published, when they weren't, you know, it wasn't clear to anybody but themselves that they might make it as a writer. And that, that he talks about what he called some combination of humility 
in chutzpah that lets you get through that. That you need to be able to learn and to get better and to say, okay, I got to do that again. I got to do that again. I got to do that over and over and over again. But you also need to feel like, you know, you're going to make it. You have something special that you're going to make it, that you need to just have that sense about yourself that, you know, and he quotes from Pushkin who says something, you know, pushes back from his chair at some, somebody, I guess, saw him do it apparently and said, Pushkin, you bastard, you know, just thinking you wrote this great thing, you know, just so pleased with himself. But that you need both of those things, that you need to be able to sort of accept the fact that this thing is no good. Okay, I've got to start over. And also just to say, you know, I'm going to be just fine. I'm a really good writer. And somehow to sort of thread your way between those two things and sustain yourself when, you know, uh, when no one else is really much interested in what you're doing. Mm -hmm.